Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the different types of sensory receptors. Now the first thing we need to look at is sensation itself. Sensation is the body, or more specifically the brain's ability, to pick up changes in the environment. Now the environment could be the external environment, or it could even be the internal environment. And what we have are these modified nerve endings or cells that pick up these changes in stimuli. And these changes could be anything like a chemical change or a temperature change or a pressure change or a touch change, anything like that. They can pick up this change and it turns it, the term we use is transduce, it turns it into an electrical signal, a signal that a nerve cell can carry all the way into the central nervous system and up to the brain. Now there's different ways that we can classify sensory receptors. Now I'm going to show you two classification types. First type of classification method that we can use is whether the sensation that it picks up is from outside the body or inside the body. All right, so if it's outside the body, we can term it an exteroceptor. If it's inside, we can call, call it an enteroceptor. And then there's another one that we use that sort of doesn't fit either of these that we call proprioceptor. Now, what are these? So, exteroceptor picks up changes in the external environment. These types of changes could be anything like sight, sound, taste. It could be things like touch anything coming from outside the body. Interoceptors, well, they could be picking up changes in metabolites, for example. It could be picking up changes in pH, may maybe. It could be picking up changes in distension or stretch of organs. When we look at proprioceptors, proprioceptors look at movement of the body. It looks at where the body is in its own space. And proprioceptors are made up of two primary types of receptors, which we can call muscle spindles, muscle spindles, and Golgi tendons. Now, if we have a look at muscle spindles and Golgi tendons, specifically what they pick up is, Golgi tendons look at the tension of a muscle, and muscle spindles look at the length of a muscle. Now, this is one way that you can classify sensory receptors, but I don't think it's the best way. I think the best way to classify sensory receptors is looking at their modality. Now, what do I mean by modality? Modality is the type of sensation in which it's picking up. So if it's picking up, for example, some sort of mechanical stimulus, well, that's a modality. If it's picking up some sort of temperature stimulus, that's a modality. Let's write that down. Modality, modality is the type of sensation it picks up. And this is the best way that I think we should classify sensory receptors. There's five modalities of sensory receptors I want to look at today. And I think this is the best way of classifying sensory receptors. First one is chemoreceptor. Next one is thermoreceptor. Next one is mechanoreceptor. Then photoreceptor. And then the last one I want to look at is a nociceptor. And I'm writing it down here, not because there's no room, but it's a little bit different to these four up the top. Now, chemoreceptors pick up changes in chemicals. And again, it doesn't matter if it's outside the body or inside the body. This is a classification method that just picks up the type of stimulus, not where the stimulus is coming from, all right? So chemoreceptors pick up chemical changes. And again, these chemical changes could be of Acidity, right, so pH. 
It could pick up changes in ions, for example, so sodium, potassium, magnesium, chloride, things like that. Chemoreceptors can pick up metabolite changes. So it might pick up changes in the concentration of things within the fluid of the body. Thermoreceptors, they pick up temperature changes and they basically pick up whether something is warm or hot, for example, or cold, if I can spell cold properly. Mechanoreceptors, they pick up any sort of physical distortion. Physical Distortion. Now think about what that means. Physical distortion basically is referring to touch. So it could be pressure, it could be vibration, it could be fine touch, it could be gross touch. This is mechanoreceptors. And then the last one we've got here is photoreceptors and they're specifically picking up light or photons. And these are primarily located in the retina of the eye. Now the last one we've got down here is nociceptor. Now nociceptor picks up pain and the reason why I've got it here is because nociceptors can actually pick up varying degrees of chemical changes, temperature changes and mechanical changes. Think about it. You can have pain because of a chemical burn for example. You can have pain because the water's too cold or too hot. You can have pain because somebody has pushed too hard or has pierced your skin. So this is nociceptors and nociceptors again are, don't fit specifically within one but can fit broadly within many and if each of these are exaggerated to the extreme it can result in pain. So we can write chemo, thermo and mechano for nociceptors. Okay, now the next thing we want to talk about is how do these different types of receptors turn a very specific stimulus into a chemical, uh, sorry, into a nervous response? So how does it turn all of these into an electrical impulse? So like this, when it's a chemoreceptor, you're going to have a particular type of nerve ending. And when a particular chemical comes along, it's going to bind to certain receptors and what it's going to do is it's going to modify the membrane's ability to open up channels and it's going to open up certain ion channels to let the ions move through, turning a chemical signal into an electrical chemical signal or an action potential. When we look at thermoreceptors, the temperature changes the permeability of the membrane allowing for ion channels to open up. When we look at mechanoreceptors, physical distortion of that membrane opens ion channels up. When we look at photoreceptors, photons or light changes the permeability of those ions. And when we look at nociceptors, all three of them can change the permeability of the membrane to open up ion channels. So this is a quick run through of different types of receptors.